Hey, good evening from Walla Walla, Washington. A very wet Walla Walla too. It's warmed up. The snow and ice is melting and it's raining and blowing. So uh, it's, it's nice to be in here, I'll tell you what. Hey, I'll show you what I've been up to here. I, uh, I put that uh, lever actuated uh, 5C collet chuck on here that freed up <laughs> hiding back here behind indicators the uh bow star ebay chuck and these 5c collet chucks are a copy of a bison that's a copy of a cushman <laughs> from years ago and actually these uh are a little bit under 150 bucks and uh, the ones with three pinions, I think, are better, the Bowstar ones. But this thing's really pretty good. It, it actually is. And it's nice to have that on the dividing head. I had a three-jaw chuck, which I can still stick on there, no problem. Uh, but uh, anyway, I'm going to... I got a mount here. See, I had that bow star on the axles in here. It was on this mount. This is a, a well-used mount uh, that, that the blade gave me from who knows how many times this thing's been used. It's, <laughs> it's really Swiss cheese. And uh, it's got one more shot to <laughs> put the chuck, uh, this uh, six-inch... Uh, Cushman uh, on axles in here, which will be handy for smaller parts. You know, the solid jaws, uh, you can grab small rings and stuff like that. So that'll be handy for smaller stuff that I found that this uh, machine does really quite well. And uh, combined with the uh, tailstock turret, it, it works pretty good. So... The one, the one thing um, that I remember about this chuck, it's been kicked around here for a long, long time, um, is that uh, I did grind the jaws on it and um, statically balanced it. So hopefully... Uh, Everything will uh, line up. If not, I'll I'll grind the jaws. That's that's always interesting to do. Grind the jaws a lot of fun using that device there to load them. So that's coming up. And one of the interesting things about chucks is uh, it's important to get the chuck body to run uh, better than two thousandths of an inch, and. Um, two thousandths of an inch is kind of an interesting number. Um, for example, the smallest dot in one of these uh, inspection loops is two thousandths of an inch. This is uh, an SBI uh, scale loop, seven power. And two thousandths of an inch you can see with your eye, or you should be able to, you know, or you might need bifocals like me, invisible ones. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, or a little help with a magnifier is good when you get older. But when I was younger, I could always see 2,000ths of an inch in a uh, semi-precision layout, for example, scribing, uh, um, lines and stuff like that with sharp scribes or uh, knife edges. Uh, you should be able to get within two thousandths of an inch, and that would be uh, semi-precision. You should be able to see two thousandths of an inch run out on a chuck that's running. And uh, <clears throat> two thousand over two thousandths of an inch uh, run out causes vibration. Two thousandths of an inch is the maximum runout allowed on most motorcycle multi-piece crankshafts.
Now that's kind of interesting. But a lot of the guys out there I know can uh, fudge them in a little better than two thousandths. But sometimes crankshafts are difficult and two thousandths has is, is got to be good enough. And two thousandths is uh, the Harley Davidson spec and two thousandths uh, is like Yamaha and many other uh, uh, specs for uh, crankshafts that, sp that spend thousands of RPMs. Two thousandths of an inch is kind of an important place in, um, in uh, industry and mechanics. And uh, a, uh, an interesting thing, a friend of mine really loves the Honda Goldwing, so a couple of friends of mine do, really likes those motorcycles. And uh, I tell you what, I've uh, done a lot of uh, cylinder head work, but never on a Honda Goldwing. <laughs> the weak part on the older ones was letting them sit and the carburetors get clogged up. But anyway, on a Honda engine, the overall tolerance is 2007 inch. On old Harley Davidson engines, maybe we shouldn't talk about that. <laughs> it can be several times more. So, but that's one of the things that makes a Harley Davidson an individual is uh, out of whack tolerances and core shift in the cylinder heads. Maybe I'll get more into that. But uh, when you're uh, true in crankshafts, it's an awful lot like uh, multi-fuse crankshafts or even solid crankshafts or anything that's bent. Um, you'll do the same thing if you want to be successful that I showed uh, tweaking those collets in with little uh, rods and um, parts and lathe. And that is putting stress on something and then smacking it with a hammer, a sharp blow will uh, set it. So you can true crankshafts and things in the lead by putting pressure on it and striking it. And I'm trying to think of a good demonstration to do uh, with regular rod and stuff like that. But anyway, <laughs> I've got the, uh, the plate over here and I'm going to drill it. Uh, for this uh, chuck and I'll get that on the way then uh, we'll see how that does okay I'll be back with that have a good evening anyway